This is David Kirkpatrick, reporting for the New York Times from Tripoli. Uh, we've had an interesting day here today. Uh, our hosts, uh, the Qaddafi government, uh, took us on a stroll through the old Medina, uh, where we were surprised to see uh, several Libyans uh, approaching us, some within yards of our official government minders, uh, to tell us that they were, in fact, unhappy with the Qaddafi government. One gentleman, uh, who evidently spoke good English, uh, approached me and I said, oh, well, this is a beautiful country you've got here. And he said, yes, it'll be a beautiful country when we change the system. After that, we were taken to see some of the damage from the ongoing allied American and European airstrikes. They took us to what was unmistakably uh, a military target, two warehouses that appear to be used mainly for missile storage. Some people tried to claim casualties, but the most credible officer there said, in fact, uh, they had some sort of intelligence or warning the strike was coming and moved all the people out. It also suggests that the allied campaign against Colonel Gaddafi has moved very quickly uh, beyond establishing a no-flight zone to trying to cripple uh, some of his other military capabilities to try to give the rebels a chance to get back on their feet. One of the officers there speaking privately said, okay, I understand the no-flight zone. You want to protect civilians, but this is going too far. Now you're attacking us without any limit. And at the same time, it remains an open question whether the rebels, in response to these airstrikes, actually will be able to get back on their feet. Although we saw people uh, apparently emboldened by the strikes speaking out on the streets of Tripoli, we haven't seen the rebels uh, make much progress towards Tripoli, nor have we seen uh, the neighborhoods of Tripoli or the uh, areas of the west around Tripoli uh, rise up in solidarity with the rebels in the east.